God chose David to be the next king of Israel. King Saul had died, and God gave his people a time of peace. David lived in a beautiful palace in the city of Jerusalem. One day, David was talking with Nathan the prophet. David said, I live in a palace of nice cedar wood, but the ark of God sits inside a tent. It hardly seemed fair. Shouldn't God have a nicer house than I do? David wanted to build a temple for the ark of God. Nathan said, God is with you, do what you want. But God did not want David to do whatever he wanted. God wanted David to do what God wanted. That night, God gave Nathan a message for David. This is what God told Nathan to say. David, are you going to build a house for me to live in? I brought my people out of Egypt. I gave them leaders to guide them. The entire time I have been with them, my house has been a tent. Did I ever ask anyone to build a temple for me? You used to be a shepherd, David, but I made you king. I helped you defeat your enemies, and my people now live peacefully in their own land. I promise you, David, that you and your descendants will be kings. When you die, one of your sons will be king. He will be a strong king, and no one will be able to take his kingdom away from him. He will build a house for me. I will love him and I will never leave him. When your son dies, his son will be king. Someone in your family will be king forever. Nathan told David everything God said. David went into the tent he had set up for the ark of the Lord. He sat down and prayed. God, I don't deserve anything you have done for me, and you promised to do so much more. You are so great, there is no one like you. You chose the Israelites to be your own people. You rescued them from slavery in Egypt. God, please keep your promises. I know your words are always true. God promised David that every future king of Israel would come from David's family and David's kingdom would last forever. God kept his promise by sending his son, Jesus, as one of David's descendants. Jesus is our king who will rule over God's people forever. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Today, James from Fort Morgan, Colorado asks, God has done so much for us. What can we do for him? James, you are absolutely right. God has done so much for us. You think about how he's provided so much to us, how he's provided food, places to live, friends. But more than that, you think about how he's given us Jesus. He's given us salvation, that wonderful gift. And God has done so much. And I appreciate how you want to do something back for him because he's been so good to us. It kind of reminds me of the Bible story this week that we see David recognize that God had given him so much. He'd taken care of him so well, and he desired to build the tabernacle for God. But we know that God said, no, it was not going to be David who built the tabernacle. It would be his son, Solomon. Instead, God went above and beyond and said, David, you're not going to do something for me. I'm going to do something more for you. And he told David that the Messiah, that Jesus would come from his family one day. See, here's the thing. It is right and good for us to recognize all the good things that God has done. But what we want to have happen in our hearts and our minds is that that drives us toward thankfulness, that we are grateful for what God has done and that we're just in awe, that we're just blown away how good God is to us, even though we don't deserve it. What we don't want to have happen is for us to feel obliged to do something back to God to repay him for what he's done. That is really misunderstanding God's heart and it's misunderstanding God's grace. God gives us all these things because he's good. There's nothing we can do to repay him. 
And if we try to repay him, what we're doing is we're saying, God, I don't want to accept your grace. I want to make a deal with you. I want to make an arrangement with you and, and you pay me something and I'll pay you back. And that puts us as equals to God and we are not equals. So here's what I want you to do this week. When you think about how good God has been to you, think about how much he's given you, how much he's provided for you. I want you just to be thankful. I want you to be grateful in your heart and that's it. Just sit in that for a few minutes. Just think about how God is so amazing. Think about how much he loves you and let that develop love in your heart back for him. And let that love and gratitude motivate you to live for him this week. Not because you want to earn what he's given you, but out of gratitude for what he has given you. That's a key difference. So how can you show thankfulness to God for his good gifts this week? 